Hey guys, welcome back. This is Naresh. So today we will learn something new in our uh, video. So if you know that whenever we are running our Selenium scripts, we have some UI. Okay, example, we have a website. Let's see this. Assume this is a website which give me an information of a city. Okay, let's assume that. And in that there are two buttons. One is temp and one is population. And in that, uh, if I click on the temp button, it gives me a temperature. If I click on population button, it gives me a population. Okay. And for that, these websites are the front end and they are interacting with some jar files. Okay. Because uh, let's assume these jar files are used by some other application also. Let's assume it is uh, used by mobile also. Okay, so there are some jar files through which these application is getting interacted and how they do that they do that in the form of an API. Okay, so these are the jar files for which there have been provided by a developer called an API that is application programming inter application programming interface in which we access these jar file. Okay, so I will tell you uh, more details about this. So why you think that uh, there are jar, there is an API created to access these jar files? Because it might possible the technology which is used here at the front end is different from the technology which is used at this back end. Okay, it may possible that these jar files are created in house or we are getting these jar files from outsider from a third party. Okay, so in that case, we cannot see directly, you know, what is the source code of these jar files are. But yes, there are some APIs which are provided by a vendor through which we can access these jar file and we can get some information from these jar files. Okay, so this is the way the development has been done. So everything is uh, created in classes. Those are packed in a jar file. And then there are some APIs provided through which we can access these jar files. All right. So what happened nowadays when uh, we are working in an agile kind of environment, sometimes this UI doesn't get prepared on time. Okay. Let's say you have 15 days sprint or a one month sprint in your company and you are waiting for this UI to get prepared so that, you know, you can test uh, your all your code. Example, you have, let's say you have, you have 10 10 test cases and you want to test those 10 cases using a Selenium project and you are waiting for uh, this UI to be created. So I am just telling you the real-time example how it happened. But this this UI is not getting created even on the 10th day and uh, you are waiting for that or maybe you get this UI at the last day of your sprint. So it's not possible for you to create and test those 10 test cases because it might possible certain defects come out and then you will not be able to complete your story on time. Okay, so what happened these days? So if you're creating those 10 test cases, we divide those 10 test cases between the functional and the UI level. Okay, so for the functional level example, if you click on this get temp button, you get a temperature of that city. Or if you get, click on that get population count, you get the population count of that city. Okay, and let's say there are six test cases to test the functionality, that your functionality is working fine. Then there are four test cases in which you check the UI with functionality so that the button is coming up correctly, the text box is coming up correctly, and the language written, the temp is coming in English language. If you click on that, then you get a temperature. So if you, we test the functionality with UI at the UI level. And there are four test cases for that. So what we do, do those six test cases, which has only checking the functionality, instead of waiting for the UI to be created, we test directly through the API. Okay, see the advantage here. We are testing six test cases directly through the API and only the four test cases, which are the UI level, we are testing with our Selenium code. Okay, so if this kind of situation arises, let's see how you can test it directly using an API and you can test directly this chart through the API testing. Okay, so before we move to Eclipse, just want to show you a block which I have written. So as I have told that uh, API stand for application programming interface and in that uh, there is a REST API and SOAP API. Most of the time now we are using REST API in the market. So we will talk about that. 
And as I said, the developer creates the API and exposes the API for us. And as a tester, we get the URL of the API. All right. And uh, once we hit the URL, we get a response from that URL. Okay. So the language in which uh, we communicate through the API, it is the JSON format or the XML format. Okay. And uh, as we will talk about REST API, its full form is representational state transfer. Okay, and there are various ways through which we can communicate to the API. Uh, I have just written the main one like get, post, delete, and put. Okay, so three are, these are the ways through which we can communicate to an API. I can show you how we do it manually, and then I will show you how we do it through a tool. Okay, so the different tools through which we can test an API, one is called Postman, another is called Restlet, and another is called SOAP UI. All right. I think most of you already know about the SOAP UI, but Postman is also one of the tool through which we can uh, test our REST API. I have already installed it and you can also install from the Google. I can show you how to do that. The framework to test API is REST Assured. So one of the framework which is provided to test the API is REST Assured. And we can also test the API through HTTP client class in our Java. Okay, so we can use both these to test the API, but right now we will see how we can test it through a REST Assured because it is very simple to use and test the API. Okay, so this is the flowchart I have already shown you. Now let's see how we can test the API through a manual way first. Okay, so there are many APIs available in the market, the open API, which we can try to test it. But in your company, if you're working on any project, so your developer will give you that API URL, which you can test. Okay, so, but for now we can use the open API, which is available in the market. So I was just searching for the website and I got to know about this open weather map website, which provide us certain APIs. Okay, so you can just go to this website, open, open weather map slash current. And in that, if you see, there are various APIs to test the functionalities. So it is checking the weather of a particular city as per, if you see here, it's given London. Okay, and here, okay, on the basis of city ID also, I am getting it. Okay, let me click on this one. Okay, so if I click on this one, it hit a URL here. Okay, and it's trying to get a response. So we get a response from this. Okay, so this is uh, open API and this is the URL which is provided by the developer to us so that we can check the functionality of the city. Okay, so what I will do, I will just do a control C. I will just copy this URL. Okay, now what we have to do, we have to download one software called Postman. So we can just go to Google and we can type Postman. Okay, so here, from here you can download this. Okay, you can click on download the app and it will download the Postman for you. Right, so I will not do that and I will directly open it. I have already opened here. All right, so in the postman, first we need to have to make sure what kind of, uh, you know, request we have to make. It's a get or it is a post. So as a developer, will they will already explain you that it's a get or a post. So the API which we have selected, the URL which is selected is get. So I will just give here the URL. All right, and I will click on the send button. As soon as I click on the send button, I get a response and I get a status 200. So that's mean my API is responding correctly. And this is a response which I am getting for my city. Okay, various coordinates, other information. So this is a complete response which I am getting. So this is the way we have done it manually. And now we will see on the need basis if we want to do that in our Selenium project, how we do that. Okay, so this is the blank class which I have already created and here we will see how we can do that through the rest assured framework. As I've explained earlier in my blog, we will do, we will make the use of rest assured framework through which we can do that. We will not use this HTTP client class. We will use the rest assured framework. So for that, what you have to do, you have to download the rest assured jar file. Okay. 
so in the Google let me just close this okay you can just type download rest assured okay and you can click any of the link here and you can download from here and you can download either from here so from any of the link you can download the rest assured so we are downloading from this jar 3.1.0 if you click on that it will download on your computer okay let me show you where I have downloaded so it's in C drive softwares rest assured jar file okay so these are the jar file which I got okay so what I have to do I have to go in my project right click properties okay add external jars and then I need to go to rest assured okay select all open apply and close and it will be in your build path okay so what you have to do now you have to call rest assured the same way we were calling the postman we have to call the rest assured to hit the URL and for that the command would be rest assured dot get and here I need to give my URL okay so let me just copy that URL All right, and it tells me to import the rest assured so I have to do that so once we hit that URL we get some response so I have to store that uh, response into a response object okay so I will give here response equal to when I will save it it give me an error it says to create local variable response and I am storing a response once I have a response then I can get the status of the response uh, let's see so I will say response dot get status code all right and if I want to store it somewhere then I can give int code equal to status code okay so now I have get the code of the response so I can do something like an assertion on that because this that's the reason we are testing because once we get something we have to verify that it's correct or not so I have explained earlier we can for the assertions we can use assert equal or assert true so I will use assert equal in which I have give the expected response so I will give response 200 and I want 200 my to be response and actual is the one which we have received okay so I think the wrong import has been done let me import one more time org.junit okay so this is just a response which I am getting but there are many other things which I can get from the response okay I can get the body also and I can get the other things also so what I will do I will type the body like system dot out dot print print ln and here I can type the body of a response through response dot to string all right and if I want to see how much time does it took so I will type response response dot get time and I can give here time unit dot milliseconds in how many milliseconds I got the response okay so if you see I am just doing assertion on status code I'm not doing any assertion of body I'm not doing any assertion of the time units that in the time in I get the response but in a real project it might possible you have to assert the body also and you have to assert the time also because it might possible you are expecting your response to come within five seconds or within two seconds okay so you have to assert that if it's coming within the two seconds then your test case is passed if it is not coming within the two seconds your test case is fail so that you can know if there's any problem with the API or not if it's taking more time you can raise a flag to your 
developer, you can raise a defect that this API is taking longer time than expected. Okay. So let me just run it. Run Java application. See? Okay. So it has run in the 2399 milliseconds. Okay. But what I'm seeing right now, it is not typing a body. Okay. So we have to see why it is not typing a body. Okay. So I think something is wrong with this method then. So let me see if there is any other method as string. Okay. So there is one more method through which it can be converted. Let me run again. All right. So milliseconds has been printed and even the body has been printed. All right. So through this way, you can do your API testing using a rest assured and rest assured is very simple when you compare to HTTP client. Okay. And there is one more way through which we can write this code because as per the rest assured, there is a BDD way through which you can write this code and which will be very easy and that will reduce the number of line which you are writing here. Okay, so let me show how you will write in BDD way. So if you have worked in BDD, you will know that everything we get give in the given when then condition. So same way I will give here, I will type given dot and I will give get and then I will give a URL here. So let me just copy this URL. Okay, and once it is given, I will again give dot and then I can give then condition. Okay. In then condition, we mostly used to assert something. So here I am expecting a status code to be 200. Okay. So I will give status code 200. Okay. And once it is done, I want to print my complete body. So what I will do, I will give dot log. So whatever log which I get, I will print it. Okay, see the number of lines has been reduced now and now let's try to run this again. All right, so if you see, I got my complete body and I got the status code 200. Okay, so it has asserted 200 and I am getting my all the logs print getting printed. Okay, so this is also one of the way through which you can write a code in the given when then which makes your code cleaner and smaller, but this is not a compulsory one. If you get confused, you can write it in this way like we have written before, but once you get comfortable, you can write in given when then condition also. All right, so this is only for the rest assured and this is just a first program where we are using a get but there are other programs also which we can write for post for put for delete but those uh, are the programs which we can write in our next video. Okay, this is just to show you how the API testing works. So if you like the video, let me know. I will create a separate series for the rest assured and we can go through each and every example how we can do the API testing in our projects. All right. So if you like the video, please hit on the like button and subscribe. And if any feedback, let me know. Thank you for watching.